The message is, uh, I entitled it, um, It's the Holy Spirit. We need Him now more than ever. And um, especially with the things that are going on in the world that we live right now, things is moving so fast. I mean, it's like beyond control. Um, I mean, who would have ever thought? We always think about we see the end coming, but it, it's, it's approaching us so fast to where now, you know, there's... Things you can't even keep up with, you know, uh, things that are manifesting every day in the world. Amen. Um, I heard that um, this year was uh, Black Friday was the, you know, they got they bought the most guns, they filed for the most permits, you know, and I mean, people know, you know, not only in the United States but in the world, man, things are not good. Things are accelerating at such a pace right now, you know, even with the stuff that just went down in California. And, you know, there's so much, that things are just happening fast. Um, perfect example is what John said. Here he is, he's talking to a permit, you know, officer at a building filing for a plumbing permit. And she's telling him how excited she is about, you know, getting, you know, a chip and wanting to chip her children. And this was something that, you know, even John said that the Bible spoke about this stuff 2,000 years ago. Amen. You know what I mean? That's, you know, which is wow. John, in the book of Revelations, told us that these times were coming. And these things are happening so quick. And what the Lord had put on me was, you know, we need the Spirit more than ever. Um, because we're not going to be able to do it in our own strength. You can't do it by the knowledge and the, in, um, the understanding that you have because no matter how much knowledge you got or how much understanding that you have, no matter how much knowledge or understanding that you have, you know, you can only, you'll only be able to endure what it is that, that God has called us to go through by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the only way. Amen. You know, because there's times, I know the Lord has downloaded a lot of things about the Word on me, to me. You know, revealed a lot of things in the Word. Um, but it's, you know, I find myself even, still even struggling. And, you know, even a greater need, you know, for the Holy Spirit to empower us. And I talked about this in the class. And, you know, I was talking to Charlene about, you know, she was talking about Peter that here it is, the disciples. You know, they was with Jesus, the greatest teacher of all time, for three and a half years, yet Peter still denied Jesus. I mean, so I don't care, you know, what teacher you're with or how great your pastor is or how much you think you know or whatever it is, it, that just points and shows us that, you know, the only thing that's going to keep us is the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, once... Peter received the power of the Holy Spirit, he was able to, you know, go to his death. But it took that empowerment. And that's the times that we're living in today. We need the, we need the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our life more than ever to, you know, for what's actually coming. Um, we're going to get into, um, you know, who the Holy Spirit is. And I'm going to get into a lot of stuff about that today. But I'm only going to give you uh, just the introduction of what we're going to go over. It's going to take, you know, a little while to go through this. But I want to uh, kind of tell you about some things that had happened. First thing I want to tell you is that we're in the Feast of Hanukkah. Hanukkah starts Sunday evening. Um, if you don't know anything about Hanukkah, it's the Festival of Lights. Amen. And it was uh, during that time in 163 that... Uh, Judas Maccabees revolted and, um, against the Greeks and, um, you know, and wound up eventually overthrowing, taking back Jerusalem and rededicating the temple. And it was called the Festival, Festival of Lights. Jesus actually attended this Hanukkah in John chapter 10. Right. He went up to this, you know, secretly. It says he sent the disciples on and, and then he had went up. 
and they knew that this was a time that you know was a great uh, you know stuff that was going on in Jerusalem they was all gathered up and they asked Jesus point blank if he was you know uh, the king the Messiah that's what they asked him and he knew that he was he had to watch how he answered it because there was such things that was going on at that time you know during Hanukkah they was all I mean they're remembering what had happened you know almost 200 years earlier when the Maccabees the Maccabees revolted you know so Rome is now in power and they're looking for a Messiah someone to lead them again you know what I mean so you know, Jesus said that he was basically, you know, him and the Father were one. So he watched because they was ready to put someone in power at the time. So he had to watch how he handled things in John chapter 10 right there. But um, it's pretty crazy. It's what had happened in the revolt had came, which is really crazy. The Greeks actually was, you know, uh, trying, was Hellenizing the Jews. So in what the Jews believed and what they were walking in, you know, there was actually, there was Jews that was wanting to be born again into the Greek system and become all part of that. So Greek, the, uh, the Greeks was actually Hellenizing or contaminating the, world, the, the Word of God. And that's when the Maccabean revolt had revolted. So there was paganism that was actually coming in to the true word of God and there was a revolt and it's the same thing that's happening today and with that being said you know we had sang in the song you know what are you thinking you know um, you know what are you feeling I have to know you know at this time right now well that's what is going on right now um, last week I had talked about Babylon and we got all up into that and how it was you know um, God had divided the tongues back then by the Holy Spirit and on Pentecost he brought it back together if you didn't get to hear it you need to listen to it um, and here it is now um, it's uh, it's um, oh it slipped my mind what I was going to say but anyway here it is now we have um, what the Spirit is talking about and what he's speaking you know, I realized, or we realized that the, uh, the importance that they needed the Holy Spirit back then, we need it even greater now yeah. and to, in order to bring us through uh, what it is that, or where it is that we're leading. So, there was a Hellenization that was going on at that time. I talked to you about Babylon and what was going on, that's what I was going to tell you, and how that Nimrod was a picture of Satan. He was a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Well, just to kind of give you guys a heads up, um, we had went this past week and to go get some material for my house. And on the way home, John gets a phone call. It was me and Joshua. And I thought this was pretty crazy. It was Jason and John and Joshua and Joseph uh, wow. all together, which is pretty amazing. All in, and so you never, I mean, God is amazing. So on the way back home, John gets a call that, you know, uh, his uh, daughter's husband's father, Steve, his horse had broken leg and they had to put the horse down. So, um, you know, I come home and I go in the yard and my turkey that is blind and both eyes been blind now for a long time, um, I had to put him down. Uh, this was Tuesday. Well, shortly after that, after I put the turkey down, I was like, wow, man, a horse by John's, a turkey by me. A guy pulls up on a motorbike. Now, I want to make this connection because it's, you know, it was the Greeks that contaminated, you know, that where the Maccabees revolted against the Hellenization of the Word of God. It was Hellenizing it, contaminating it. This guy pulls up at, at my house. It's in the evening time about five, I guess about five o'clock or so. And he pulls up, he's got a, on a motorbike, in my house he's got a duffel bag strapped across, you know, across his front legs, and he pulls up in a, uh, right in front of my house, and I'm sitting on a bench about to go inside, me and my wife was talking, and 
he pulled up on a motorbike, killed the motorbike, and I'm looking at him with this duffel bag on front. So I'm like, kind of like, you know, all right, what's going on? I'm on, you know, just watching. And um, my wife gets up and goes inside. So he kills the motorbike, and um, he takes his helmet off, and he, he says, uh, uh, you know who's building this house over here? And I'm like, which one? The one, you know, right next door or this one right here? He says, oh, no, this one right here. I said, me. He said, can you help me bury my dog? And I'm thinking about, I'm like, you pulled up in my driveway on a motorbike, and you asking me to bury your dog. Well, first thing I'm thinking about is, I, right, I've been asking the Lord, you know, Lord, show me people that I can help. Is this someone that God is bringing, you know, that I can help? And, um, and then he unzips his bag. So now I'm kind of like, you know, it's crazy out there in the world today. You don't know what's happening. So now I'm ready, you know, for anything. And he says, uh, you want to see a picture? So he pulls out his bag, you know, a, a little portfolio. So I walk over there up to him, and uh, I'm watching him with that bag, you know, because I don't know what's in the bag. And it was full of stuff. So I'm looking at it, and he's, he's got this Italian Massive. This, it's a, the dog is an Italian Massive. And they get to be like 160 pounds, a big dog. And I'm like, he says, um, man, what do you, uh, you know, can you help me bury my dog? I'm like, he says, uh, I said, man, it's crazy you asked me that. A friend of mine, you know, just had to put a horse down. And I come home and I had to put my turkey down. He says, well, what do you do? I said, well, normally we just drag them off into the boneyard, you know. And he says, oh, I can't do that. I said, well, how deep are you wanting to bury this dog? And he said, well, I want to bury him, you know, six foot. And I'm thinking, well, I ain't about to dig no six foot hole, <laughs> you know. So, and so yeah, I start talking to him a little bit, you know, and I said, you know, man, I, well, you know, I, I can't help you, you know, because I don't have a machine or anything like that. And so I invited him to church. I said, look, I pastor a church right next door. I'm looking for an open door. Is this God, someone God brought there? And so, um. You know, long story short, after I invited him to church and, you know, and all this stuff, and we got to talk, you know, shortly, you know, he gets a phone call, oh, I got to go, and um, he said, look, I'm going to come visit you over there Saturday at the church, and uh, he said, I'm going to tell my wife, I'll come back, i see your house. Well, before he had left, you know, he told me, I said, I was kind of leery, he said, man, he said, uh, he said, uh, um, I'm from Brooklyn. You know, he said, I'm Greek Orthodox. And he's got that, you know, he's got a bandana, he's got a goatee, he's got, uh, he's in leather, you know, he's riding on a, you know, on a hog. You know, so he's got that biker look and everything. And, and, uh, and he, he seemed like a pretty good guy. Yeah, you know, and talk, that, you know, how to, they talk and stuff. And so, he told me he was Greek Orthodox, and I didn't think anything about it. He had a strong accent and everything, and so anyway, he gets a phone call and he leaves. Well, that, you know, I go inside, and, you know, I'm thinking about it. Lord, was that an opportunity that I missed to go over there and help, you know, uh, this guy bury his dog? And I know it's six foot, but if you want me to dig this hole, you know, you know to reach somebody, I'll do it. But anyway, so that morning... Early that I went went home, went inside, went to bed, got up around 12 o'clock at night. I was up, so I went to work in the house. So I'm working at the house, you know, early in the morning. I start thinking about everything that happened. I'm thinking about a dead horse, a dead turkey, and, you know, a, a dead dog. And, I mean, these things mean things. You know, God will, I'm like, man, what the heck is going on? Then my daughter called up and said, you know, her dog got out and was dead. And then the next morning, the rabbit, I got a ra dead rabbit, you know, in a, on my, it, it was crazy. So I'm like, man, something's, something's up. So I'm thinking early in the morning, you know what? I do have a machine that I can, you know, call my friend and talk to him. And maybe he'll let me borrow the machine. I can go over there and, and you know, I'm sure he'll let me use a machine to dig a, quick hole and throw this guy's dog in. I, I'm even thinking about how I'm going to bury him. I'm going to give this dog a, a, a pastor's burial or whatever, a funeral. Because I want to reach the man. You understand? I'm looking for the Lord. 
So anyway, um, so about 6.30, you know, I call, I call this person up, and I'm talking to him, and he's like, he's like, he's got an Italian massive? I'm like, yeah. He said, where does he live at? I said, he told me he lives down the street in a, uh, in a log cabin, you know, off of seas. He said, man, I know that guy. He said, that guy's bad news. He said, you need to stay away from that guy. So now, how crazy is this? I'm asking the Lord if he wants me to go. I call the one that has the ability, that will have the ability to help me do it or loan me a piece of equipment to do it. And this person is warning me about this person. He knows him. So I said, you know what? I ain't going to do it. So the next day, you know, it was actually that day. It was that early that morning. I'd call this person. I went out, and I was coming home, and I see a backhoe coming out the guy's yard. He had buried the dog. And I'm thinking, all right, you know, good. The guy got his dog buried or whatever it was. So we, I come home. I pull in my driveway. I pull in my driveway. It ain't 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, that, you know, this guy pulls up on his bike again. He's got his wife with him. And I'm running boards and uh, planning some boards out. And, man, I wave to him and good to see you and all of this stuff. And he, uh, he gets off the bike and, you know, he walks up. Hey, man, I told you I was going to come back, you know. And I brought my wife with me to show you into the house. I take some pictures. And, and uh, I'm like, man, yeah, I'm glad. He said, I'll. And so we walked inside. And... You know, they're looking at the house and everything, and, and uh, he's like, man, man I'm going to get you to come down to my log cabin and get you to build me a closet. And, oh. and I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, all right, Lord, you know, what are you, what's going on? You know, who, I mean, the first thing he's telling me, you know, he didn't ask me, but I'm still open because I want to see if God wants me to reach this, you know, this man. And he said, uh, he said, yeah, man. He said, man, I'll tell him my wife. He said about, you know, about you and you, the church over there. And we're going to come see you and, and how you know, you know, Kabbalah and, and how you into, you know, you know, the meditation. And I'm like, and when he dropped his hands like this, I'm like, wait, hold on a second. I said, I told you I know about Kabbalah. I don't teach Kabbalah. And I know about meditating and I know about meditating on the Word of God, but when you just drop your hands like that, he said, uh, I, I said, you know, I, I don't teach Kabbalah, you know, and I know there's, I teach the Word of God. And um, I said, as you can see, you know, I, I said, look at my house, there's Bible in the walls, and, and, um, and my life is about Jesus Christ, and it's about the Word. I mean, I'm a teacher. I'm a, uh, I said, well, I said a teacher, but I said I'm a student of the Word. That's where I'm at. That's, I love the Word of God. Yeah, 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 man, we're brothers. You know, and Jesus, and, you know, and through Jesus, we're brothers. And, and, um, and I'm like, and she said, and then he looked at her, and then she had said, yes. She said, yeah, Jesus is our brother. But, you know, and I'm like, something still, it's just something's not right. You know, and um, I said, yeah, I said, well, I said, you know, we was talking about Kabbalah, about Kabbalah. Kabbalah gets into n numbers and, and all of these kind of things. And the Bible talks about these things. So I said, let me tell you what I'm talking about. So I kind of shared a couple little things with him. What the ten generations from Adam to Noah and how numbers kind of repeat themselves. And I said, that's what I was talking about, you know, uh, with the word. I'm not into the Kabbalah stuff or anything like that. And... Um, he said, and they looking at me like they didn't understood not, nothing. I just explained to him from the Bible. He said, yeah, man. He said, you know, there's even, there's, uh, there's writings that go way back, way past, you know, uh, the teachings of the Bible. That's even before, and you know, where they had giants and all of this kind of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I know all about the giants, you know, the sons of God coming down and taking the daughters of men and Genesis 6 and... And, uh, and all of that. He said, yeah, I was, I was telling my wife that. And um, I said, but I just, you know, I want to make it clear that I'm not into Kabbalah. 
And you know, I'm into the Word of God. He said, well, you know, you know, that, man, you can't really believe all of that. I'm like, wait, I said, wait, hold on a second. I said, what are you talking about? I, you can't believe all of that. Well, you know, man has got his hand in it and, 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 and messed it all up. But, you know, it's, it's all about love. I said, yeah, it's all about love. It's all about, you know, Christ dying for us. And, and uh, yeah, he's our brother. I said, yeah, he's our brother. But not only is our brother, he's, he's our God. He's my God. He said, man, what are you talking about? What, you like, uh, like, like you worship Jesus and all of that kind of stuff? Brother, I said, I said, yes, you better believe it. I said, Jesus is God. Man, Jesus is not God, man. You and me, we Jesus now. I said, what? All of a sudden, it was like it went from here to up here. I said, what do you mean we're Jesus? Man, we don't need Jesus no more. You and me are Jesus. We can heal ourselves if we meditate. I said, let me tell you something. He said, in fact, he said, and Jesus, don't even sit on the throne. You and I, we're brothers with Jesus. We're one. We don't even need Jesus anymore. I said, let me tell you something, brother. I said, you take your wife and you get out of my house after I had went off on him. Now, when I tell you I went off on him, and I don't want to get into it because I don't want to get riled up, but I was fired up. And you can ask my son. And he said, I, I said, uh, I said, after I went through scriptures, proving to him who Jesus was, not only was he the son of God, but he was God. And he's the one that's sitting on the throne. I said, man, look at my house. Look what's in the walls of my house all the way around. I'm a student of the word. And he said, man, and he, let me tell you something. He got, I mean... He was mad. He jumped up on my face. And this, he, he jumped up in my face and he, he, had, he had two uh, armbands on right here on his arm. And he yanked the armbands down. He said, let me tell you something. He said, I'm Greek Orthodox. The Bible come from my people. I said, let me tell you something. The Bible didn't come from your people. It come from the Jews. And from the Jews to Latin and from Latin to Greek. You take your wife and you get out of my house. Amen. Son. He said, you see these marks in my arms? He said, I healed myself. I said, let me tell you something. Jesus is the only healer. Amen. But I told you, you want to know what's going on at this time. I talked about last week, the, this was the first time ever in my entire life that I had to throw somebody out of my house. First time ever in my entire life. I didn't give you not even, it was 15 minutes of me just clubbing him in the head with the Word of God. I said, you're telling me things you don't even know what you're talking about. And you can at my son, he walked outside. He's like tripping. I said, let me tell you, let me show you something. And I grabbed my Bible like that. He said, oh, God wanted them. I said, yeah, and I opened it up. I said, yeah, but does it look like this? Did you study the Word? You don't even know the Word. You can't believe that stuff. I said, I'm going to tell you again. You take your wife and you get out of my house you're not welcome here. And he, and he said, man, I said, I'm going to tell you another thing. You, you're talking, what you're saying about lining up with the 33, because he got talked about lining up with the 33 and the body. I said, let me tell you something. The body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. If you want to, I know about the body and what it points to. I said, do you know in your upper cavity, you got a veil that separates your heart, your lungs, and your liver. That's a picture of the Godhead, the Trinity. And uh, it got into God being the heart, the lungs being the breath, which is the Holy Spirit. And the liver is what the cleansing, which takes out the impurities. That's Jesus Christ, but you only see one. I said, what you teaching is heresy. He said, and he said, what's heresy? And he looked at his wife like that. 
He said, what you talking about heresy? I said, I'll tell you what you're preaching. The doctrine of devils. I said, you get your wife and you get out of my house. Son, you talk about fire. And hey, and then I said to him, and I wasn't mad, not one bit. I was not mad at all. I was not. Huh? I wasn't mad at, at one bit. And I said, and brother, I just want to let you know something. I love you. He said, you don't love me. He, and then he, he says, you blind. You can't even see worshiping Jesus. And his wife said, you're blind. I'm sorry. You're blind. I said, listen to me. I'm going to tell y'all one more time. You see, because I invited him in my house. And instantly I knew what I was dealing with. I've never had, I've talked to Jehovah Witness, Mormons. I've talked to religious people coming out of the wazoo. And I could sit down and talk and discuss the word of God. But man, the spirit of God rose up in, in me instantly. And it says in Galatians 1, when you're dealing with someone else that doesn't preach Jesus Christ and him crucified, Paul said, let him be accursed if he preaches any other gospel other than the word. Right. Son, all of a sudden, God said, I heard in my spirit, don't invite him in your house and don't bid him Godspeed. Right. And it took, I knew that I had to tell them and their demons and what they carried there that they was not welcome in my house. Right. I had to tell those, tell those guys about four times, four times <laughs> to get on their horse and ride out. And let me tell you something. You can ask my son. He was right there. I walked, and I'm standing out there by the thing after I told him I loved him. He said, you don't even know what love is. You're blind. You can't even see. I said, okay. And he's walking to the motorbike like that, and he gets on. He's getting on the motorbike and putting his helmet on, and his wife gets on the back. Now, his wife comes there. She's got a, a 1970s orangey, green, yellow, iridescent color wrapped around her head hanging down. You know what they wore in the flower days at... That psychedelic color bandana, you know, thing, you know, wrapped around the head, and uh, and I'm I'm like my my lord. He gets on on the bike like that, and I'm really calm, really. I'm not mad at one bit, and you know, as he's pulling out, I said, hey man, I just want to uh, uh, have a good day, you know, and oh no, I didn't say have a good day. I said, hey man, as he he pulls out in front of me and he stops, I said, hey, I just want to let you know something. Ain't no hard feelings. Yeah, right. Bop, bop. And he, he drove off. He hit his horn. <laughs> beep, beep. And pulled off and rolled down the street. But let me tell you something. Why I told you all of this kind of stuff. Why I told you this. You want to know what the Lord's thinking? Yes. We need to know what He's talking about. It was at this time right now that the Greeks was Hellenizing the pure Word of God. Now check this out. The man gets off his motorbike, introduces himself as John, and that he was Greek Orthodox. <coughs> trying to Hellenize what it is that I believed. But you know what? Because I knew the Word. Because I knew the Word. Because let me tell you something. They spoke Jesus. They talked about him being the son of God. They talked about him being at the right hand of the Father. They talked about him dying on a cross. They taught, it wasn't till I said what you're preaching and what you're talking about is the doctrine of demons. Because if you don't know your word, you know what? They'd be sitting in here this morning. They would have been not only invited in the house, I invited them to the church, and then they would have brought that garbage in here amongst you to, help, to try to contaminate you. But because of the Word and knowing the Word. Now, why does this... Now I want you to think about something. I heard the Lord tell me, let the dead bury the dead. Now let's just look at what happened. I'm riding in a car with John, Jason, Joshua, and me, Joseph. John gets a call. They got to put a horse down. Okay? In the truck. I get home. My turkey, who's blind, I have to put him down. I have to club him in his head. I had to club him. That's, you know, I, hate to say, I mean, that's how I had to put him down. Just one hit. 
you know. Well, actually, but anyway, he was sick. He had to go. And, and, and when I tell you sick, he was walking in circles, and it was time for him to go. And then a guy pulls up who tells me he's Greek Orthodox, asking me to bury a dog. And he wants me to bury him six foot under. Do you think all of these things happen by accident? Come on, brother. He rode in on a steel pony, right? Isn't that a horse? What's really crazy is both him and his wife called me blind. And I just had a club, a blind turkey in the head. It's exactly what I did. I said, I'm blind. You're the ones that can't see. So I had to club him in the head. That's right. With the word. And then he wanted to bury his, his Italian massive six foot under. You bury a man six foot under, not a dog. It was a picture of him. He was dead. When he pulled up, my wife even said, when she looked in his eyes, they were empty, like dead, when she saw him for the first time. Last week I told you guys that the enemy is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, right? And I likened, you know, Nimrod, who is holding a lion, to the roaring lion, right? And let me tell you something. That lion pulled up at my house, riding his horse, came into my house where he roared at me and I had to take the word of God and club him over the head with it and sent him and his wife packing. So the enemy is attacking. And the only way that you and I are going to be able to distinguish the truth is by the word of God. Amen. You have to know the word of God. Amen. If you don't know it, I mean, let me tell you something. First thing, I was like, you know, I got I to gotta confront this guy. I don't want to. I'm not, a, I, I'm not a person that confronts. I don't like to confront. But I knew what was going down. And after they were gone, I went in my house and I bombarded heaven. I binded, I binded everything that came in that house and binded it in heaven and on earth and loosed the Spirit of God to cleanse it, to go yeah. through it, because yeah. what they tried to bring in it. Yeah. But anyway, here it is, the Greek Orthodox. It's the Festival of Lights in Hanukkah right now. It was during the Hellenistic period when the Greeks tried to Hellenize the Jews. Here it is, I have a Greek man pull up, try to Hellenize the Word of God, but when you know the Word of God, then you can use the Word of God, Amen. right? So anyway, so that was my interesting, uh, that's how my week. And then right after that, I got a phone call about, you know, um, us needing to be dependent upon God. And that's what the message is really about. Um, number one, it was the Spirit of God that revealed to me who they Amen. were. Yeah. He revealed to me who they were. And we need the Spirit of the Lord because... The love that he was portraying, that he said to me, I can't even tell you, I don't even know how many times, probably four or five times when I first met him, yeah, it's about love. Well, that love that he was talking about, wasn't. it was phileo love, it was brotherly love, which we learned today in class. It wasn't the agape love. The agape love will lay down Amen. where you lay down your life. And the only way you can get that kind of love, and uh, Charlene did an excellent job yeah. with, relating to us what's phileo and what's agape. That's right. And I'm just going to say it briefly. When Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? He said, do you agape me? Will you die for me? And Peter said, I phileo you. I love you, Lord, as a brother. And he asked him three times. Mm -hmm. Peter didn't, you know, and that's why he says, at the end, Peter said, Lord, you know all things. <clears throat> Peter denied Christ before he received the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, and then Jesus says, well, you know, um, when you're strengthened, you go strengthen your brethren. He says, but when you're old, he tells him that, you know, another's going to carry you where you don't want to go, speaking of his death, meaning the Holy Spirit, it was now going to empower Peter to be able to agape him, meaning lay down his life. Why am I saying that? John's, you know, what he 
uh, encountered. There's a chip coming. It's going to require you and me to agape Him. It's going to require you and me to say, Lord, whether I, can, whether I can't fish no more, whether I can't do plumbing, whether I can't do construction, whether I can't do this or do that, you know, you're going to have to forsake mother, brother, sister, family, job, because without doing that, without having the agape love, and the only way you're going to have that agape love is if the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is living inside of you. Because it doesn't matter how long you've been with Christ, how much you know about Jesus Christ, if you don't have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, you will not lay down your life. You will seek to save it. And you won't lose it. You realize that. That's what right now is all about. Because that right now, shortly, there's coming a time when you and I are going to have to make a stand like I made a stand up and at. That man was talking about phileo love. The love that all the world's going to have where they're all going to unite under this phileo love. Yeah. Man, you don't love me. You don't know what love is. Yeah. No, I love you. I'll die for you. Yeah. You don't even know what that's talking about. And he's yet telling me the world's going to say, you're blind. You don't understand. What are you doing? Man, go get the chip and go to the food store. Go get what it is you need. Your kids are hungry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, guess what? You, you know, it, they don't hardly ever write checks anymore. It's direct deposit. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're talking about on 88.7, a cashless society. My, I just said my son-in-law, Racetrack, is moving to a chip system. Right, Scott? Right. He just showed me all his cards are chips. They're preparing for what's coming. The system of the chip. That means that without this chip, whether it's in a card or eventually, which is going to be on you, you will not be able to buy or sell. Buy or sell. You understand that? You're going to need to be able to make a stand. And the only way you can make a stand is what they prayed for in Acts chapter 4. Lord, here, let me read it to you. And this will bring us into, bring us into where it is that we're headed. Because that which is in the beginning, that which was, is that which shall be. And there's no new thing under the sun. Meaning, what they went through then at the beginning of the church is going to be at the end. Right? There was no big buildings. Well, there was one big temple, but when Jesus established the church, it was in houses. Right? Why didn't Jesus, why didn't Gabriel, why didn't Gabriel go to the Pharisees and Sadducees and announce to them that, uh, uh, that a king was going to be born? He went to the shepherds in the field. You would think he would go to the leadership that's supposedly way up there. But they've gone astray. He went to the shepherds in the field that was tending to the sheep. Right. That's who the angels announced that a child was coming. A child would be born. A child is born. A Savior. Right? Thought about that? He didn't go to the Pharisees and Sadducees. He didn't go to the big temples. He went in the field. Right? To the shepherds that were tending to their sheep in Bethlehem. In Acts chapter 4, to show you how the importance, the, the, the dependence, and I, you know what? I got that word two times this week. I got it. Re Rebecca got it. Charlene got it. And the Lord delivered it to me. Dependence, dependence, dependence. You and I are going to need to be so dependent on the Holy Spirit Amen. more than anything else. Yes. But not only dependent upon that, which I'm going to show you, but you're going to need to be dependent upon the Word. Yes. You're going to have to know the Word. That's where you get a relationship. Because the Spirit, when He speaks, the only thing that He speaks about is Jesus Christ. Amen. He will not come and speak of no other. That's how I knew instantly that the, that the doctrine of devils that they were preaching... That Jesus is not God. That we don't need Jesus anymore. That you and I are Jesus. Oh. That sounds crazy. Yeah. 
But the Bible says that Christ in you is the hope of glory. That we become Christians or Christ in the earth. It doesn't mean that we become Jesus. But he's in us. But he's in us. And unless you know the word of God, then the doctrines of demons will be able to deceive you. Wow. That's right. We are Jesus. Hey, he said, in fact, he said, in fact, look what he threw at me. In fact, the Bible said that we'll do more miracles than Jesus. We'll do greater miracles, he said. Right. I mean, he's throwing a word at me. Which was really crazy. I said, yeah, it says greater miracles shall we do. But it, it has nothing to do with greater miracles as better miracles. It meant more because now Jesus is in us. And now we're doing His work throughout the whole world. And, I'll, and I was talking to Joe, Brother Joe, and it just, man, it, it, it nailed me. that. And we even talked about it this morning. Charlene brought it up. With, and she wrote it in her, in her lesson with that, that Jesus, when His ministry began, He was tempted of the devil. Right. And how did He combat the devil? Word. With the Word. Amen. Right. Three times. I didn't even realize what was going on. But I was confronted with the Word. With the word. Yeah. Doesn't the Word say this? Doesn't the Word say that? Yeah. And I had to come back and straighten it out and put it like it's supposed to be. Right. Right? I had to correct it. It says that in the last time, it says, bow down and worship me. Right? The very thing that he... I mean, this guy even says, oh, do you worship him? You don't worship Jesus. What are you talking about? It says, and Jesus rebuked him. That's right? It said, be gone from me, yeah. Satan. That's right. It's exactly... Not even... It's exactly what I had to do over there. Get your wife and get on your pony and hit the road. Amen. Right? But I had to club him with the word a little bit. Amen. And it wasn't him I was clubbing. It was the demons that was in him that had him deceived. So let's read uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 23. They had received the power of the Holy Ghost. And in Acts chapter 4 it says, And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all the, uh, that the chief priests and elders had said to them, and when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, very important, one accord, and said, Lord, Thou art God, which hath made heaven and earth and, and the sea, and all that is, there, uh, is in them. Who by the mouth of Thy servant David has said, Why doth the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? Wow. Man. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against His Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord... Behold their threatenings that's coming to us. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak the word of God, may speak the word by stretching forth their hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. That means the Spirit came. Yeah. Right? where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the Word of God with boldness. Amen. And that's what happened in that house. Amen. Man, it's what we're going to need for what's coming. Amen. Now, I want to talk to you about what we're going to get into next week. And then I'm going to end. I wrote at the top of the page, um, 
knowing the Spirit of God versus the Spirit of the world and self. Knowing the Spirit of God. God's Holy Spirit. Let me just put it to you in another way so you can understand it. God, His Spirit has left Him and come into you and me. It's His Spirit. God's Spirit is now resided in Jesus, now resides in you and me. You understand that? The Spirit of God resides in you and me if you've accepted Jesus. So, knowing the Spirit of God versus the Spirit of the world and self. You see, this guy, you know, the Spirit that he was manifesting was, you can heal yourself. You know, it's all about love. It sounds good. It's going to sound really good in the end. And people are going to look at you and say, man, what are you doing? You are not, you know, you don't want peace? You don't want love? Man, all you got to do is just become part of the system. No. And you're going to be looked at as heretics, as you the troublemakers. You don't want to go along with us. I'm talking about something that's about to hit us. You understand that? I'm not talking about something that's a long ways off. It's on us. It is happening so fast now. It, it can be at any time. So, I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. Because you need to know Him. You need to know the Spirit of God. You need to know Him. We need Him now more than ever. Amen. You understand that? We need Him now more than ever before. So I'm going to talk to you about our dependence on God's Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's going to bring us into a lot. Number one, I got 16 things I listed down that, that apply titles that apply to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to go over that. Who is the Spirit? You know, just a couple of them. He's the Spirit of life. He's our Father. And I'm going to give you all the Scriptures. Amazing. Amen. He's the Spirit of God. The Lord God in Isaiah 61.1. Man. He's our Father. In Matthew 10.20. He's grace. He's truth. He's holiness. He's the Spirit of life. He's the Spirit of Christ. He's the Spirit of adoption. He's the Spirit of praise. He's the Spirit of His Son, the Spirit of prophecy. He is the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Eternal Spirit. Amen. And I'm going to give you all of that. We're going to go through these Scriptures. That's just titles of who He is. Amen. Then we're going to talk about the deity of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. Amen. That's why up here He's called God. Amen. The Spirit of the Son. We look at Him as the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Let me make it plain and simple. It's God's Spirit that lives in Him, Amen. has left Him, Amen. and given unto us now. Amen. He's given us His Spirit. Right. Man, you realize who He is? Amen. He's the one that separates you from the world. Right. He's the one that bears witness and tells you that you are the children of God. Right. Right. He's the one when the Lord returns, says, this one is yours and that one isn't. Yes. I think you better know Him. Yes. Amen. Amen. I think you need to have a personal relationship with Him. And that Spirit does not contradict God's Word. So therefore you'll know what spirit of a person is. How? Number one, you have to know the Word. If you know the Word, you'll know of what they are speaking, whether it is of God or it is not. If you rely on a so-called spirit to lead you and guide you and you don't know the word 
It's the wrong spirit. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Oh, I have the Holy Spirit living in me. I, you know, I'm, I don't get in this much. Oh, well, I can tell you what, Bubba. You will be led down the wrong road. Amen. You're blind. And you're naked. And you are going to end up dead. And you know why I had to put my turkey down? Because it had a seriously bad infection in its eyes where I couldn't see no more. Isn't that the world? You'll let the world affect you Amen. You're, and, and blind you where you can't see anymore. But we're going to go through the deity of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the personality of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit in the world. We're going to talk about um, the work of the Holy Spirit in Christ's ministry which is actually also in our ministry. You see, Jesus took upon the ministry of the Father, and we have picked up where He left off. That's what Peter did. That's what we're supposed to be doing. You know, God, Jesus came to do the will of the Father, and now we are doing the will of the Father by following after what Jesus had done. Right? So we're going to find out or the work of the Spirit in Christ's ministry. We're going to find out also um, the work uh, of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. The, not the Old Testament, I'm sorry. The Old Covenant. We're going to see how the Holy Spirit operated back then. We're going to, um, we're going to see how the Spirit works among you and me, amongst believers. And a, a perfect example, how the Spirit works. Perfect example. Rebecca sent me a paper about dependence. Charlene calls me up. Man, I just keep hearing we need to be dependent, <laughs> you know, upon, you know, the Lord. Dependency. Same thing the Lord put with me, dependency. Now, you see the work of the Holy Spirit in the church. Promise does... Promise, you know, I, I told her to do something for me. And because about um, the Greek Orthodox. So, Promise does this thing on Hanukkah with this Greek Orthodox. Now, Charlene doesn't do anything about Hanukkah, but actually, uh, Promise brings me, while we in church, a coin with uh, Antiochus on the coin. Huh? Prior to me getting this from Promise, Charlene makes a copy of Antiochus and hands it out on a coin. Can you believe this? Yes. Antiochus, when he took power, he passed the law. They said that any Jews, that, uh, they could not worship uh, their God anymore. That's exactly right. And it, they must be killed. That's a, thank you. And the Muslim religion says, the, the, the Islamic terrorist Muslims say that any Christians that can't be converted must be killed. That's right. You got it. That's exactly right. That's where we tie in with Islam and everything that's going on. That, now, watch this. Now, we're talking about what's coming in the end. Now, what he just said, I just read. Don't, you see me sitting down reading. I didn't read this before. What he just said, that's what Antiochus Epiphanes said. You can't serve your religion anymore. So, what had, what uh, our brother Charles just, uh, Ch I mean George just said, I what George just said to us was that Antiochus made a law decreeing that they couldn't serve their God no more. They couldn't follow what they believed. And if they did, they didn't convert to Hellenism well, then they would be killed. Well, that's what's coming for you and me. Amen. You want to know what the Spirit of the Lord is saying right now? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? The song said, I have to know. Here it is. Two confirmations. Let everything be established by two witnesses. John came up here and testified how a woman at the permits office can't wait till they get the mark or a chip implanted in them so that she don't have to worry about her children any, anymore. Brother, it is on us. And soon, 
like I told you about this false love, they're going to tell you and me, we can't gather together no more. We can't, you know, serve Jesus Christ anymore. But it's going to take the Spirit, God's Spirit, for us to raise up with boldness and say, I don't think so. And if that takes us to our death, so be it. Bring on the lions. Also, if you don't know, Barack Obama has canceled Christmas at the White House. You kidding me? First time since it's began, 33 years. Now, is that kind of crazy? They've been having Christmas, which, you know, at the White House, which is really not a big deal to me because I know what they are depicting through Christmas, but really it's a direct attack against the Christians. Right. Exactly. It's a direct attack against the Christians. Because I don't believe that Jesus was born at this time. And I'm not going to get into all of that right now. But here it is. You know, even this guy was talking to me over there in my house about 33. Here it is. 33 years in the White House for the first time. 33 years. Barack Obama canceled Christmas. Said we're not going to have it. Now watch this. In his first term, you can YouTube this and see this for yourself. In his first term, while he ran, he said, I promised that I would take the soldiers out of Iraq. Yeah. He said, in my second term, I'll cancel Christmas. 33, we know it's tied in with the Illuminati. Amen. We know, you know, the meanings of it. Christ died at 33. Wow. Christ died at 33. He's making a statement. We're not going to have Christmas at the White House now. I'm telling you, there's a direct attack. Let me tell you something. And the attack that came, the attack that's being done, is going to come to our doorstep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to pull in our driveway. It's going to come right to where it is that we're at. And guess what? We're going to have to make a stand. Yeah. Either you're going to fall under the system or you're going to make a stand for Amen. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you've truly received the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because believe me, I don't care how much you know, I don't care how you was raised, Amen. I don't care who your mama is or your daddy is. Because when the Bible says straight is the gate and narrow is the way and few that be that find it. Amen. You know that path that says that straight and narrow? Yeah. That word straight and narrow breaks down in the Greek that only one man can walk down. You know that? Wow. It's like a plank. Mm -hmm. That means there ain't nobody on the side of you that can hold you up while you walk in. And that plank leads you to one man, and that door is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So nobody else is going to get you in. You have to walk your walk that God has laid out before you, and it's a balance beam. You understand that? And the only one that can keep you on that balance beam is Jesus Christ in the Spirit of Jesus Christ, Amen. which is His Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, Get uh, y'all look at Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Second Corinthians chapter, chapter eleven. What verse, verse one and I believe through four. We could go further, but this is it. You read it. Okay. Um, Charlene wants me to read a scripture. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one through four. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly. And indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one as a husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, that means craftiness, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with them. For I suppose as I was not wit behind the very chiefest of apostles. Paul is warning them. 
here, and I'm going to finish that. Paul, who wrote Corinthians, also wrote Galatians. If you go to Galatians, this is the importance of knowing the Word of God. To be able to go through it. You think God told us to study to show ourselves approved unto men? No. Unto God. That's right. Paul said in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from Him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Amen. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have received, let him be accursed. Amen. So, we need to know the true gospel. And I end with this. We're going to find out the work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Covenant. Amen. We're going to find, about, find out about the Holy Spirit's work, His ministry in the church. Amen. We're going to find out about the reception and receiving the Holy Spirit. And then we're going to finish with the filling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because if you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, you need it. Amen. It is what empowers you yes. to do what it is that God has called you to do. And then we're going to find out, last but not least, we're going to find out the Holy Spirit as our teacher. Amen. Right? Amen. Because the Holy Spirit as our teacher, He told me I was blind and I couldn't see. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit is the one who illuminates the mind. Yeah. He said, literally said it too, that they were the illuminated ones and I was in darkness. But the spirit they had wasn't the Holy Spirit. So we're going to talk about the Spirit as a teacher, how, how He illuminates the mind, He reveals the things of God, and last but not least is the resurrection power Amen. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That is the mystery of the ages, that just as Christ has raised up, so we too will be raised up in the end Amen. when He returns.